on the missing bolt. But it was still able to go back and say, dude, you guys didn't reattach it correctly. So they come back in and they put it right, right back up after we did our investigation almost a year and a half later. And they did throw, put a through bolt in, but the guy was so unsure of himself that he put a leg on the ground onto the roof, onto the shingle roof. You think he had a little sleeper foot there or anything? Just jammed right into the, right into the asphalt. And right there in that corner, uh, these didn't have these legs either before. So you can imagine all the torquing that was going on. And in that corner, there was a bolt hole there for you to basically attach the thing in the corner. I was able to pick it up and videotape myself, pick it up, walk it out, and then walk it back in and just drop it where it is. So it wasn't even properly reinstalled after a major incident. So Farscapes are the bastard child of egress for a reason. Not many people care about it, not many people understand it. And in the 1930s, they threw away everything that, that you used to have as far as information about it because nobody thought it was going to outlast and be in 2011, you're going to have Farscapes still up in, on some of these buildings. They thought that these buildings were all going to be gone by now. Nobody ever thought that bubble gum and duct tape and paper clips were going to be invented because guess what's saving a lot of these uh, structures? This is another case where in Boston, Beacon Hill, a girl fell from, that, uh, from there to the ground because she was using the deck with her boyfriend on the building next to it on Beacon Hill. When the phone rang, and they, obviously that was a good age of 25 to 28, guess what people who finish drinking at the club all night go to the roof deck and the phone rings at 3 in the morning, what do you do? in the dark. You go back, and when she went back, because she, this is her boyfriend's apartment, you think the rail that was there to protect her from falling was, uh, was missing, and you can still see the hole, um, she fell five stories to her death inside. So these are events that are happening nationwide that are basically getting people to say, you know, uh, we, we need to get some information. And if any of you have ever tried finding any information about uh, fire escape repairs, fire escape information in the past, there wasn't any. Believe me, we scoured every inch. So a lot of it we have to rebuild from scratch and just use common sense. Structural engineering technology, a painting technology, and just start putting things together, and that's what we did for you. Who inspects fire escapes? All the states allow structural engineers to inspect fire escapes. Some states will even let an architect step in and inspect the fire escape. Some states say that you guys inspected the fire escape because you were just here yesterday and you walked there and you didn't say nothing. So why are you telling me this problems with my fire escape when the, the city inspector was just here and he gave my building a clean bill of health and he walked out of the fire escape in the back and he just said I needed this little simple paper from you and stop giving me a hard time because now they're trying to buy paper. As soon as you said that it was okay, and I'm telling him, no, you got a, a problem here, they want to hear me, so I'm out. They kicked me right out the door and they keep smiling and dialing until they get somebody that says that sells drive-by paper. Drive-by papers, don't get out of your car, drive by my fire escape, roll down your window, here's your two, three, four, five hundred dollar check, give me this certification that says the fire escape is structurally sound, has been kept painted, and yes, you can put a disclaimer, anything unseen, anything hidden is uh, not, my, not my issue. That's, what the, that's the disclaimers on most structural engineers' forms. Um, there's fire escape inspectors, well, I've been told the two licenses, Boston has a G3 license, but you don't have to honor it. So it says right on your code, structural engineers and or others accept the bill for the building official. So I, I inspect in Boston, but as soon as I go into Chelsea, guess what they want? The structural engineer to do the inspection. So cities will go back and forth which ones will accept the G3. And there's the California license put out by the fire department. Now, that, like I said, it's a thousand bucks, hundred question uh, exam. Um, you got to go out with a fire marshal and do a, a test on site, and then you have to fill out the paperwork correctly to their satisfaction, otherwise you don't get their license. And every three years they say, send me another check. So if you guys want to sort of get a, a, uh, an inspection program, I'll put you in touch with uh, Captain uh, Killian out in L.A. under the Reg 4, because they, they have certification for anybody touching anything that's fire protection, sprinklers, alarms, it's on, all under a uh, system. So instead of reinventing the wheel, uh, I think the best one that has the Reg 4s down for fire protection is uh, L.A. So just copy them, okay? And we just met with them uh, two weeks ago, and now they're looking to do the five-year rule and implement the confidence test because they don't have it. They've been just inspecting ladders for the, the past 40, 50 years, okay? Right off the bat, this fire escape here, pass or fail? Okay. And we're doing the inspection. This is the same fire escape. The reason why we got there is because there was a, somebody broke into the building. The cop showed up, and he fell through one of the traps, right? But now, from this, what, what did they get? I got a call from the secretary on this one that said, we got a report from an engineer locally. And he says, the fire escape is good, 
does need a paint job, but I want you to fix a couple of things. So we're sitting there, okay, well, let's take a look at the report, because we thought it was just going to be a, um, we thought it was just going to be a, an inspection, and this is what we got. And I'll read it for you a little bit, but basically, uh, this is what he wants you to do. The steel exit door uh, does not open evenly. Some of the uh, platform floor stringers need to be are bent, unbend them. We suggest uh, that you, you fix those. A third floor tread is broken, put it back on, and the fire escape requires paint. This is the structural engineer that sent this letter, and he's, gonna, he's able to certify that fire escape. We went in and condemned the building. That's how big it is. And look at all the connections. Huge with rust. And I don't mean quarter inch, I'm talking half inch, three quarters. So now it becomes like, what, who does the official believe? You know, a guy that has credentials, eight years of school, or somebody that comes in who actually has a license to inspect and has fixed these things, and we say, well, the thing, the thing uh, so if there's no standard, guess who can win? And guess if I'm bidding two prices on this thing, so if somebody's bidding off of this report, it's twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of repair. Somebody bidding off of this report, it's two, three, four thousand, five thousand dollar paint job. And you cover the rust. That's all you do. You cover the ugly. And then you know why the fire department doesn't want to climb up this thing in the middle of the night. Because there's no oversight. So we started creating certain things that basically the confidence test is going to avoid. So here's some confidence tests throughout the nation. This is, this is LA's confidence test. So we use some of their information. This first page is what you have to fill out when you do a Farscape confidence test. And it's got everything about the client, everything about the thing, what you're, what you're inspecting, and you have to do a little bit of write-up. Here's our confidence test that we use as a model that, you know, Seattle copied, Tacoma copied. And as you can see, we used their front page, but then we wrote a general description and a structural description. So this is structural questions, yes, no, and this is general questions about the paint. And these are specific yes, no questions so that there's no more opinions anymore. Did you do this? Did you check that? Did you check the connection into the building? Did you uh, verify that there's no rust in any of the connections? So these are questions. So from that, as you can see, when Seattle got a hold of it, they asked, they basically, if you, if you look at our questions, they asked the same questions on theirs because it just made sense. It's not that we invented the, uh, uh, the confidence test. There was none out there, so we created one that basically put the, the, the engineer's feet to the fire. Here's the Comas test. So if you go online, Tacoma.org or Tacoma.com, go to their fire prevention, you see their tests on there. The one thing that we like about Tacoma, they have all these questions with the very same yes, no questions. So now engineers can no longer write opinion letters. It's my opinion that the fire escape is good. They have to fill out this form and say, yes, I've done this, and yes, I've done that, and I agree. So that's sort of, this gets you closer to a certified repair. So a lot of these questions just basically will scare some of these instructional engineers that don't want to do the right job. But the one thing that uh, they did also was this annual test, which we liked. Uh, so they're making the owners now also step up and every year walk through, a lot of times with the fire department on the early walkthroughs, and verify that the fire escape is in good condition. And they have several three questions. You know, the bolts are looking good and nothing, the paint is good, and all moving parts, including doors and windows, are functioning. That's all they have to ask. But it puts a little bit of responsibility onto the owner. This is the tags in, in, uh, in Seattle. Now, they want their tax to be 19 inches wide, 11 inches high, 7 to 10 feet off the ground, permanently attached to the fire escape. So uh, to the fire guys, if you ran to a fire escape and it had a big red tag that said fire escape out of service, any questions on what to do next? If you have a yellow one, and the yellow says it has deficiencies, but a yellow and a red, they're not that far off each other. The red means I saw dangling pieces. The, the uh, yellow one says I, couldn't, I can't certify it. you got too much rust in the connection. So, there's always going to be questions whether firemen want to jump on any one of these colors. But a white one, fire escape has no deficiencies, and it's going to tell you what year it got inspected, when the next inspection is due in five years. How helpful would that be for the, for the tenants to look outside their window and see a white tag or a yellow? You think that's going to influence my rent pain if I have a yellow tag outside my window? But if I have a white tag, I think, you know, I'm trying to have a national law um, implement as soon as possible that all rents from now on should be collected through the fire escape by landlords and that everybody just tapes their check to the outside of the window and as you start making landlords collect their rent through the fire escape you're gonna see a lot of fire escapes fixed but uh, that line is not gonna get anywhere very very fast but but these these tags in Seattle is helping these guys make decisions immediate decisions if it's white it's all right they just get on it and get going and get the fire escape filled because this is their means of egress when all hell breaks loose
This is over here in, uh, out by Worcester. There's a uh, detention center for 17-year-olds. We inspected this, I think, off Route 9. Somebody may recognize where it is, but this is in an, an inside courtyard. So this is all rust on a fire escape that the, the, the uh, officers and the kids used to get out of the building. Obviously, it's just one floor, but still 10 feet is 10 feet. Look at all the rest. This thing hasn't seen an inspection or a repair in at least 25 plus years. Look at all the rest here. Just so you know, this is through a metallurgist. He'll tell you, it takes 25 plus years to grow a quarter inch of rust in a connection. So anything beyond that, half inch of rust took 25 to 50 years to grow. Of unchecked repairs, unchecked rust will grow a quarter inch every 25 years. How much growth is this? Is this 25 years or greater or less? Because that's all fire escapes need. Now, a lot of you guys walk down fire escapes when you're looking at them, or you walk up fire escapes, right? So this is what happens when you have fire escapes that have this much rust, and there's a pin in there, whether it be the bolt from the, the bolt pin or the rivet pin. And a lot of times why fire escapes don't fall, and they haven't fallen 25 to 50 years ago, is when you were stepping on it, even though it had rust, guess what was stopping the tread from falling? Not the rust, it was actually the pin. And, but the rust does stop some other ones, because every now and then you're walking up a set of stairs, it got rust on both sides, and it's frozen because the rust as it grows, it squishes that tread and holds it for you. But this is what you've got to worry about, whether you're an inspector or a fireman, is this. This is why we do a hammer test. Three pound hammer. walking up these fire escapes and we hammer test, not because it's part of our inspection, it's part of our safety test. You go up and ping them. You know what the sound a, a nice tread makes when it's got all the good things? It, it pings. Ping, ping, ping. You know what it makes when it's got rust as the only thing holding it? It's a thud. 